All right, so what we're installing today is the Mr. Heater uh, Max Garage Heater. Uh, it is a 50,000 BTU unit, and it'll heat up to 1,500 square feet. Uh, the space I'm installing it in is only 24 by 24, small garage, so there should be plenty to heat that up, uh, especially once we get the ceiling insulation in. So stay tuned and see how the progress goes. All right, we're going to be talking about this today, the heater. Got my tropical shirt on. We'll show you how we installed it. What's going on, Pops? <laughs> we're in. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we need a uh, the pipe dope, pipe wrenches, and we're going to put a splice on here and send another piece of pipe through. Okay. All right. Since we finally got through that, I think it was uh, sandwiched uh, two by times we were going through, so... After a bunch of bits, <laughs> we finally made a hole for a half inch gas line. It's haunted. All right, we're gonna try Blue Monster Liquid Thread Sealer. We gotta go through part of the cinder block foundation. And it should be pretty easy sailing. Just gotta go through here. Make a 90, 90, 90 down. And we're gonna tie into this half inch that's coming into the water heater. All right, so we're down in the well room. Gas line's coming through. This is where the garage is. And we just drilled through half of the cinder block. We just gotta go through the other half. All right, let me get in there. So we Here just, we we just barely got this coupling through the wall, so then we got jammed up here. And we're having to bow this pipe down just to get this through the concrete because um, we kind of drilled a little bit uphill, but we're through now. All right, now we got nice big bolts in there. We can actually use the vise. Right here, we we're just looking for space. There's not much space between the drop ceiling and the rafters. Um, due to all the venting for the HVAC. And we were installing this during Thanksgiving, so of course my sister's boyfriend is ripping the trailer in the backyard and we're deep frying a turkey, drink some beers. Well, we got it up there, still need some adjusting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Menard sells these little gauges that you can put some pressure in and pressure test your system. Wait about an hour. Um, so all the cuts and fittings that we've made it up are currently good so i can move on plumb this up to the heater that we got up there and then we got to finish up the basement all right so we got this uh chicago machinery pipe threader from harbor freight uh we hooked up the vise just on the shelf here this thing actually works pretty good we'll demonstrate on the next pipe we originally had this set up outside with the vise but it started sleeting super nasty out so we ended up setting up in the garage which worked out a lot better and this harbor freight pipe threader um, actually gave a really good cut uh, it looks like a factory cut that you get uh, on the end of the pipe when you originally buy them so i would highly recommend it uh, it's about double the price of a ratchet setup plus it comes with all the dies and the cuts come out really nice All right, in the garage end of the plumbing for the gas is all completed. Got a shutoff valve, a dust collector, and a union. Non-union. <laughs> all right, so we're tapping into a live valve. Got, got that shut off. All right, smoke test, number one. <laughs> And the Honeywell thermostat. Oh, sorry, I'm in the way. No, you're good. And the Mr. Heater Max garage unit. Just no gas now, the gas is on. Yep. It's going. Cool. Just got to the exhaust and we're done. Pops. 
So cool. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Garage is a freaking disaster. Again, after putting the gas lines in for the heater. So, time to uh, clean all this crap up. Get this place back in order. All right, got the elbow in. Uh, I'm about to run the support box with some two by fours. Uh, mark the spot for tomorrow and we'll go through the roof. Hope there's no snow tomorrow. All right, this is just kind of mocked up for now, but we got this 18 inch section here, which we're gonna take out tomorrow, but this kind of shows us where we're gonna be cutting a hole in the roof. Uh, I got the little support where we're gonna box out this support box bracket. So it don't go flying in the wind. And uh, tomorrow we'll be cutting on the roof. Cool. Right, there really wasn't much room to use that whole uh, screw and string thing, but uh, that's the educated guess. Try that. All right, here goes nothing. All right, we can see daylight. That's good. Fully committed now. All right, so I think this is what I'm gonna need up there. Um, I can pry up the shingles with the putty knife, cut the shingles with the razor blade. Um, I do need a sawzaw too. Sawzaw. Feel around for nails, pull nails out. We got a box of screws to secure the flashing. Uh, we got the vent top for the pipe. Uh, pipe's already outside. And we're going to need some caulk and a caulk gun. And that should do it. All right, now we're ready. The only thing I would recommend um, that I didn't do would be putting all your tools in a backpack um, so you're not flinging everything around while you're up on the ladder. Um, one other thing, uh, make sure you put the exhaust pipe in the correct way. I did make another trip for that too, because um, there's a female and male end on the exhaust pipe. The first thing you want to do when you get up there uh, is find the mark that you made from the inside out that you drilled through. Um, put the flashing uh, over the hole. Try and envision it where it's center. Um, from there, you can use a sawzaw to start the cut and then a jigsaw to finish it. Um, right there, I'm actually using a putty knife to pry up the shingles. It is a little bit colder out, so you gotta be careful because they are brittle. Um, but yeah, you just feel around for nails, get those out of the way, then you can slide your flashing into place. Alrighty, so we got all the nails loose around there. Just need to secure the flashing down, cock it in. Came in just about right. Problem is I forgot to put a, a sock in there, so we're gonna have to drain all the scraps that fell in the pipe. But it's going well. All right, so once you get your flashing in place, you wanna put some screws on either side. I got two on either side, that should be plenty. Um, then you use the caulk to just go around the edges. I did put some underneath the shingles as well to secure them. And it always helps to have an extra helper to hand you stuff so you don't have to make extra trips up and down the ladder. She's a little long, huh? Just kidding. It's gonna go down 18 inches. It's still gonna be super long, but we need a minimum of five feet uh, for the heat to dissipate, so. We'll go get that adjusted right now. All right, so we just gotta finish sealing this thing up. There's a clock in there. All right, and then we're gonna put an extra rain collar on there. This is just basically double insurance. Um, make sure we don't get any leaks. Hey, this thing is tight. Tight like a tiger. Yeah, it's gonna 
work out nice, you guys. A little heavy on the sauce. And for this stuff, you gotta use high temp. It's like fireplace, something or other. High temp silicone sealant for use with pellet stove, gas appliance, vent pipe, and roofing flash, and that's what we're doing today. Got the good stuff. It's like 10 bucks a bottle, but let's uh, get this cap on and get out of here. That's a job well done. Not too bad. All right, just packing up the tools. Not a bad view from up here. See how much of Lake Michigan you can see. You can only really see it in the fall for the most part, but you can see quite a bit from up here. All right, so it's all plumbed and sealed up. I'm just gonna let the sealer set up for a few hours before I fire it up. But then we can do a test and uh, see how long it takes to get nice and toasty in here. All right, just fired up. So looks like it's about 45 degrees in here right now. Got it set at 70. All right, so 25 minutes. It's gone up seven degrees. Um, I guess that's not bad because there's a lot of stuff in here and everything was cold. Plus we have no ceiling still. So, um, and we have good ventilation for the soffit. So, I don't know. Uh, let's see how long it takes to get to 70 degrees. All right, Breaking and around. that wraps up the video. Uh, please like and subscribe.